to you know love you know it's an intense feeling of affection and concern toward another human being hi i'm sophia jessica and this is angel and welcome to the fan carpet hello hey Nat. how are you i'm good how are you yeah doing well thank you so well, it's a, such a pleasure to speak to you um i've been a i've been a been a fan of your work since expendables 3 um oh, nice. so um so yeah mm -hmm. well done um so if we go back to the beginning um how did you start your career in the industry um well i was a dancer i actually grew up in london i was a ballerina at the royal ballet school and i got fortunate to dance a lot you know i was a i was at the rumba as well doing contemporary and then i got injured like every athlete i guess <laughs> Um, it's a very demanding, um, you know, business. So I got injured and then it kind of took me back to, you know, thinking what else can I do? And when I was young, I've always wanted to be an actress. Um, but, um, I wasn't very good at memorizing things like for some reason, like dialogue and poems at school. So, um, I'm very good with like body and movement. So hence that's why I was a dancer. But then I told my mom, I was like, you know what, I'm going to finally try, you know, becoming an actress. And, um, I came to LA and I went to Lee Strasberg Institute and I tested my skills and I was like, you know what, I'm good enough. <laughs> I don't know. Awesome. I'm pretty much like, yeah, I just, I just decided to, you know, dive into it and, and be like, you know what, why not one more, you know, actor coming to Hollywood to try, you know, it's luck. So. Excellent. There's yeah. It, you have to find your way in there somehow, don't you? So. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, so <laughs> what was it about um, Till Death Do Us Part that made you want to be a part of it and tell the story? Um, I I wanted to make a movie where I can kind of showcase um, my skills as a as a as a martial artist that I've been kind of doing. Like um, I got into it since I came back to I, I came to L.A. and I wanted to kind of stay physical, but not do only ballet. So I started doing a lot of like martial arts and, and jujitsu, jiu kickboxing, all kinds of stuff. So I was looking for for a project, you know, in that John Wick world where you can do stuff, you know, physically and still, you know, still act. And, and it's a, something fun and something thrilling and something that mixes genres. Um, I felt like maybe, you know, it, it'd be interesting for the audience to see different things and different stuff going on. So when I read the script, I automatically came to the director, Timothy Woodward Jr. And I said, look, this is, I would like to, you know, for you to make this. And I would like to, um, to play the, the bride. And he was like, well, yeah, there's nobody else that can do that many fights for sure. <laughs> You're probably the, the perfect skilled person for it. Um, Cause you know, when you make movies, um, especially like, you know, under the, 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 these kind of budgets, you just don't have enough time. You don't have enough people. You don't have enough, you know, training. You don't have enough time to put together perfect previews. So you have to have somebody who is, you know, willing to just dive in and do all kinds of stuff on its own. Um, and I was like, I'm, I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's figure it out. So, you know, we kind of just started putting it together and he uh, got a great cast together, um, and we had, um, you know, wonderful person, Jeffrey Reddick, a writer, you know, creative fund of the nation who came on board and said, let me, you know, figure this out with you guys. Let me help you. And that's hence that's how it came, you know, to be that it's also from the creative fund of the nation because we added a lot of gore. We added a lot of like different different other elements besides, you know, the action stuff that it has. Um, and just and also um, Timothy was it was great to add, you know, this dark comedy. The kind of again like the the mixer of genres like which is you know some people like it some people don't but we were going for something different something you know more blended and more unique so awesome um so <laughs> what does it mean for you to be a storyteller and tell stories in this way um i think it's it's kind of my my profession now you know when you're an actor when you become a director a writer an actor it's your responsibility now to catch you know to capture certain things on on screen and to motivate the audiences and to to move them in certain ways so it's important for me for sure because now i'm picking things that i want to have a life of, of its own and then you know my children and their children can still go back and watch it and it can change you know the industry somehow it can change somebody's opinion somehow it can change 
you know, the, the way we look at things sometimes. So it just depends on the project that I'm picking. Like, for instance, with Till Death, um, Till Death to Us Part, um, it was important for us to do very different types of fighting. And that's why we we didn't want to do like um, your regular, like, oh, let's just, you know, kick, punch and blah, blah, and, and super choreographed. It, we wanted it to be very messy. And the director like could not stress it enough. I don't want a choreographed fight. I don't want it to look nice and normal and pretty. I want it to look very, you know, realistic. And so we were trying to, you know, I, I was trying to add certain movements in, in those fights as well that have not been shown before or, the, or you don't really see it. And that's why, you know, hence that's why I'm fighting in a wedding dress as well. So adding, you know, making <clears throat> movies is either creating something that hasn't been seen before and touching the audience with something completely different or or at the same time you're you you're motivating them to do something else in their life or or just changing their life course in general because you're just touching them from inside out so it just depends on the project that i that i take on and i have a certain goal of why i'm doing it and what i want to you know what i want to achieve with it absolutely um so um do you now that you're behind the scenes uh, as a producer do you look at um projects like differently uh with with that sort of guys on uh to it now rather than just seeing it as uh, as a, like um uh, as the person in front of the camera oh absolutely once you become something outside you know outside of the acting world outside of in front of the camera once you put yourself behind the camera there's so many more elements and there's so many things that you start understanding and you start realizing oh my god this is really a team's work it's not just about me memorizing my lines and then you know creating character coming in and going and it's not just it's the movie's not made because of me there's so many more things going on and you know you read the script first and you see and you know this the story in your head then you then we shoot it and then it's completely different you're like i didn't imagine it like this and then finally when they edit it there's like a third version of the film where you're like oh that's what it was and now i get it and then that and as an actor of course we all sit there and we're like damn it i wish i would have done that i wish i would have oh oh yeah but that's you know it's our job but of course as a producer i just i just I, I started understanding everybody's position and I value their like work and what they put in and to making this movie, to making any kind of movie. It just it's it's really like a team's effort and it's it should be valued for sure. And I respect everybody's now like decisions and, and their positions because now I'm like, oh, you, you 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 think this this needs to be here. OK. I trust you. I understand now. I get it. And when I when I used to be stressed a little bit, like sitting in the trailer waiting, now I know why. Now I know. Oh, they're they're fixing stuff. It's okay. So now I'm I'm this patient actor. I'm like, oh, it's okay. It's good. <laughs> They'll figure it out. They're probably like fixing the permits or something. Yeah. <laughs> or the crafty didn't arrive. You know. You start you start dealing with like the most like I don't know like stupid things but at the same time it's like literally to the actors that are sitting in the trailer is everything you know mm -hmm. so okay awesome um so um on the subject of till death to us part um do you do you have any memorable moments from the filming that you'll take with you for the rest of your career oh my god there's so many absolutely i mean one was uh there's a famous scene with a chainsaw that we're trying to obviously film last because um you know once you're filming a movie where it takes place and the and the characters wearing a white bridal dress throughout you have to have several of those dresses mm -hmm. and you of course you adjust them accordingly so we unfortunately one of our dresses did not arrive from italy which i ordered them from and um um, it was all this actually. The company is amazing, um, but they they sponsored those dresses, but they did not arrive on time. So I only had two changes. So when I'm sitting in front, of, you know, about to act with with my scene partner Pancho Muller, um, this the splash of, of blood is supposed to like come all over me, and we decided to let it, you know, to put it aside and say, okay, we're gonna save it till the last day, the day because you don't have you know, wardrobe change. And I was like, okay, fair enough. So I'm, you know, starting to act and the makeup um, department, unfortunately, didn't hear the director say that. So as soon as he said, you know, action, and here it is, like this whole like splash of blood that like, goes all over my face and my body. And of course my perfect white bridal dress. And that's where we all said, uh, cut, 
what are we gonna do? <laughs> so it was it was a pretty much a disaster. I mean, we've tried bleaching, we've tried washing, we've tried putting it upside down, inside out. I mean, we've tried everything. And in the end, in the end, you'll never guess what we did. I painted. I painted the dress. I still have it. When I took it off, it stood next to me because it was so stuck to my body. So, I mean, we've had, besides this crazy experience that I had, of course, there were so many other moments. Like I loved working with Cam Gigante, loved working with my scene partner, Sedaris Blaine. I mean, that dancing scene that we have um, in the final act, it's like one of my favorites because I got to dance and I got to act at the same time. And it was just, it was, it was a beautiful atmosphere. And you, when you watch like the, you know, the setup, the director did and the DP, the lights and everything, like to me, I think it's magical. Like I'll never forget that. And another moment that I was like, that I, <clears throat> that was kind of funny as well is um, our time on the boat, uh, on the yacht when we were filming. Um, so that was another moment that I'm not going to forget because of the funny moments that happened because everybody on set um, got nauseous and they got, and they were basically throwing up. Was, to me, I thought that was hilarious because we were trying all to end the day and and then, but everybody was sick, including the director. I guess he was sick probably like 50 times. It was between takes because he's watching the small monitor. And if you don't know, the monitor stays still. So when you look in the camera, everybody's, you know, st still nobody's is moving. But when yeah. you look outside and you look at people, everybody's going over like this. It's crazy. And that's what, and, and for some reason, that's the day when we were unlucky and it was like really stormy. It was like the water was just going crazy. And yeah, but a lot of, a lot of moments, but yeah, a lot of stressful, but also good and fun. And, and the action, of course, like I love doing the action in this movie. Like I said, I had the freedom to come up with my own, you know, things that could, I could incorporate ballet movements into it. And it was just, mm -hmm. I try to make it flow. So it's not, you know, super, you know, kickboxing that's it you know yeah. not mentally I just wanted it to I wanted to add a little bit more like I guess gymnastic style into it you know so that it flows a little bit better and I wanted to incorporate the white dress into it too so awesome. which was kind of hard actually fighting in the in a wedding dress I'm not gonna lie <laughs> it was it was an experience of its own it's heavy it's like lace and it's really heavy. And yeah. uh, and the whole movie, if you haven't noticed, I'm bare feet. That's another thing that the director said. Oh, that's going to be fun. Let's have your character be completely bare feet the whole time. What we didn't know, he goes, well, you'll be like Bruce Willis in Die Hard. And then later on, we, later on, we Googled and apparently Bruce Willis had some sort of like special shoes or booties like made for his for his feet. He was never bare feet. And I was like, what? I literally have gone through this whole pain, like running around outside, like on the roof, everything's fighting on the concrete with no, you know, no kind of soul. And you're like, <laughs> so yeah, that was, that was another and pretty crazy. I was always like scared someone was going to step on my toes. <laughs> right. It's, yeah. But it makes it memorable. Um, <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. Uh, so what are you, what are you hoping audience will take away from until the after was part when they see it? Um, I just want the audience to have fun and wa like watch it, like you know, just know that that it's a it's a dark comedy. Know that it has dark humor in it. Like know that it we're not really trying to make a serious, you know, action type of like assassin movie. No, it's more like you know, it's kind of almost like making fun of those like assassin films, but with a lot of gore, with a lot of blood, and it's just very you know brutal and and real realistic but with with a lot of fun you know action scenes i did like a, i think like i guess seven because there's like seven groomsmen so it's it's just you know but basically um and try not to i want the audience to when they're watching it just to kind of like um follow the scenes and because we have a very interesting way that that the director decided to edit it and it's kind of like goes back and forth between two um, storylines and in the end it all makes sense <laughs> that's yeah. all i'm gonna say it all makes sense so have fun you know awesome um and just before i let you go um um where can we find you online to keep up with everything you're doing um and your production companies um so i'd love for um for you guys to follow me on my instagram natalie underscore burn and on facebook natalie burn a one and my production company seven heaven productions and born to burn films i you know, actively produce movies. Um, I love putting things together. Uh, don't know yet what I'm going to do next, but I'm I'm diving into something interesting right now, figuring it out, and I'm sure it's going to be cool. So, 
Awesome. Well, Natalie, it's been a, been an absolute pleasure to speak to you today. Um, congratulations, and, you. and and I look forward to what you do next. Thank you. Thank you, very you much. so much for having me. It's Thank fun, you. Mark. Take, Thank you. Thanks. Take okay. care. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Thanks. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. Please follow us on Facebook, X, and Instagram for more content. Bye for now. I'll show you what made me the Golden Gloves champion of my community. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.